and you see starting to go. Welcome to the eve of Easter, to the first proclamation of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Subdeacon Patrick is going to read some narration for you as he had during the week to tell you what's going on, but let me just briefly explain what we're going to do first. After he reads the narration, those of you who can and wish to follow outside with us for the blessing of the Paschal Fire. You know, in Jerusalem, every Easter, a fire appears from heaven in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This has been happening for centuries. It's been well documented every year. Uh, I have friends who have been there and experienced this. The fire that we light, as Patrick will read, is simply a, a reminder of that, but also the reminder that Christ is the light of the world. We have candles out there for you, uh, and those candles will be lit later in the service. Just be careful going down the steps, and careful coming back up the steps. And if you fail remotely unsure, stay here. It's perfectly okay. We're coming back, and we're not going to leave you here in the dark. Uh, we'll bless the Paschal candle, which is the, the, the big candle we have, and then we will process back into the church, and your candles will be lit at that time. Uh, Some beacon. resurrection from the dead. We have spent the day at the tomb of Christ meditating on his passion and death. The altar has been left bare. The holy sacrifice has not been celebrated. Now, in this night of resurrection, we renew the mystery of life coming forth from darkness, of life coming forth from death. This is a night of watching and waiting, a time of expectation with ever-increasing joy until we reach the high point of the Easter mystery in the celebration of the first Mass of Easter. During the vigil service, we must take part with mind and heart and will in all the words and phrases and actions of this night. We must respond from full hearts to the celebrant's prayer, to the solemn litanies, to the baptismal questions. This is the principal mystery of the church's calendar, the greatest moment of the church's year. It is a time of grace and holiness and renewal. As we have died with Christ to sin, so now we rise with Christ to new life and the promise of life everlasting. The Easter vigil begins with a service of light. 
and the light is the light of Christ to illumine the darkness. A fire has been lighted from the spark struck from a flint as the light of Christ comes forth from his stone tomb. The fire will be blessed with a prayer that we may be set afire with the longing for the brightness of heaven. The Easter candle is the symbol of the risen Christ. When it has been lighted and blessed, it will be carried in solemn procession into the church as a sign of Christ risen in glory at the head of his people. First, the celebrant will mark the candle with the cross of our salvation, with the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet, Alpha and Omega. For Christ is the beginning and the end of all things. And with the number of the year 2014, he will consecrate in a very special way our triumphant king. Next, the celebrant inserts five grains of incense into the candle and lights it from the flame of the Easter fire that will be lit outside. The incense grains are signs of the wounds in Christ's body. Now the glorious signs of Christ's triumph over death and the source of our salvation. The deacon will change from purple vestments to white vestments out front. For he is the herald of our joy. As we go into the church, the deacon will proclaim the glad news of Christ's resurrection, lifting up the candle, which is the light of Christ, each time singing the light of Christ. And we will genuflect and reflect and reply, thanks be to God. And the light of Christ is shared by his members as the light from the Easter candle goes from one to another of Christ's faithful people. The light of Christ now illumines all present, and as the light scatters darkness, so Christ masters the power of evil through his sacred resurrection. Afterwards, the deacon prepares to chant the Easter song called the Exalted. This is the gladdest hymn of all the church's year as we are invited to join the deacon in praising of Christ Jesus risen from the dead and the light of the world. This is the holiest night of all human history, prefigured in all the centuries before Christ. This is the truly blessed night when Christ rose from the dead, when heaven is wedded to earth and God to man. We will rejoice in the resurrection and in the brilliance of that light will stand before the risen Savior. We direct our thoughts to holy baptism in which we are buried with Christ and rise with Him, in which we are made dead to sin so that we may be alive with Him to glory. Life and grace come forth from the power of Christ's death and rising up. This is the mystery of baptism that God should give us new life, His life, through water and the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. First we listen to the Old Testament lesson. We imagine the foreshadow of Christ in baptism. The lesson will begin with the account of creation as baptism is a new creation, rebirth, and renovation. The next lesson we will hear is of the Jews as they were led through the waters of the Red Sea. So we are led through the baptismal waters to freedom from sin, newness of life, and the promise of eternal glory. The third lesson we will hear from the prophet Isaiah as he describes the church, cleansed and purified by holy baptism, which we must keep without stain and without sin. And lastly, we will hear the warning of Moses that we should obey God's law. This is our baptismal pledge to serve God according to His will. The fourth prayer, we will kneel and beg God's help of the saints. Our prayer should be, excuse me, after the fourth prayer, we will kneel and ask God's help of the saints. Our prayer should be that all the baptized will remain strong in faith. Our responses should be loud and clear as we call upon God for mercy and upon His saints 
for their prayers on our behalf. After the first of the litanies, then the water of baptism will be blessed and made holy by the church's prayer. Again and again, the celebrant will call down God's favor upon the waters that many Christians may be born again from the blessed element. <clears throat> Finally, the Easter candle itself, the symbol of Christ risen from the grave, will be plunged into the water three times to show the power of God's grace that will be granted to all those washed with this water. The water which will be blessed to sprinkle the people after we have renewed our baptismal promises will be withdrawn from the vessel of baptismal water. The celibate will next pour into the holy water the oils consecrated for our by our diocesan bishop on Holy Thursday morning, a sign of our unity with the local shepherd of Christ's flock. Then the baptismal waters will be made holy by solemn prayers, by the candle of the risen Christ, by the sacred oil, it will be carried in procession to the baptismal font, to the sacred place where new Christians will be made for the coming year. From the font will rise up new Catholics New Orthodox, new with the life of Christ born of God's grace through the waters of regeneration and baptism that have been blessed before our eyes. Again, our candles are lighted from the flame of the great Easter candle. We listen to the celebrant's instruction and renew our promises of our baptism. With the light of Christ in our hands, we pledge again to be faithful to the graces given to us and promised to us in baptism. We say the Lord's own prayer as the common prayer of all Christian people. Our watch ends with the beginning of the holy and divine sacred mass. By concluding the litanies, let our petitions to God be for all of the family of Christ, for all who are united to us by the sacrament of baptism and by the reception of Christ Jesus in the Holy Eucharist.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
we should love the invisible God, the Father Almighty, and His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who for us paid the debt of Adam to the Father eternal, and blood it out the hand writing of the old and trespass with his precious blood. For this is the feast of the Passover, whereon he the true lamb is slain, and by his blood are all our doorposts hallowed. For this is the night whereon at the first thou madest our fathers, the children of Israel, when led forth out of Egypt to pass dry shot over the Red Sea. This therefore is the night which dispelled the darkness of sin by the light of the fiery pillar. This is the night which now throughout all the world set apart them that believe in Christ from the corruption of this life and from the blackness of offenses restoreth them to grace and uniteth them in holiness. This is the night whereon when he had broken the bonds of death, Christ came up a conqueror from the lower part. For being born would have not availed us, unless we had been redeemed. O oh, wondrous condescension of thy loving kindness toward us, O oh, tenderness of love without all price, that to redeem the